pretend to So the Burlington Tenants Union, the mission is to grow tenant power, improve housing quality, and democratize housing in the greater Burlington area through collective organizing, education, and redistribution of resources back into the hands of the people. We have a public meeting tomorrow at the libra library at 10 a.m. Uh, there will be some refreshments, so we would love if folks who came out tonight come there tomorrow. Uh, in the back of the room, Emily uh, has some paper copies of questions, a questionnaire that some counselors answered. Uh, however, if you, uh, there's only a few paper copies, so you can also access it online at burlingtontenantsunion.com. Um, and then it's under join us for the council debate. And if you click the button download, it will download it and show up on your phone. Um, our hope tonight was that uh, really the folks in the audience would be able to uh, ask questions and share stories, uh, you know, read what some candidates have said and answer those questions or ask questions. Um, so the General rules tonight, we ask that if you are asking a question, you leave it to under one minute if possible. If you want to ask a question, but for whatever reason don't feel comfortable, there are sticky notes right outside. You can write your sticky note, write your question down, bring it up, I'm happy to ans uh, ask it. Uh, we understand that being a renter can be incredibly traumatic, particularly if you have been evicted or discriminated against. Uh, that being said, we ask that there is no hate speech, bullying, or harassment. Uh, if you are a landlord or work for a landlord, uh, we ask that you not ask questions. This is a space for tenants to ask questions. Um, and if there are homeowners that want to ask questions, we ask that you wait until all tenants who have wanted to ask are able to ask. So this is just going to be a kind of uh, debate town hall type style. Uh, we're hoping that tenants will share their experiences. Uh, council candidates uh, are allowed and encouraged to respond uh, if you, know, you hear something you might disagree with or that you agree with. Uh, and we ask that just because there are so many candidates and we thank you all so much for being here, uh, we ask that you try to keep answers to 30 seconds. We understand that that will not happen, uh, but that's you know, just, just, just to reach for that. Uh, my job is going to be to keep candidates on time. Uh, for folks who come up to the podium, uh, let them know when they can speak. Allow candidates to respond. Uh, make sure that people who are asking questions keep to their own time. Um, and, and that is really it. So um, bef uh, before we begin, I was just hoping we could go one at a time, very quickly, very briefly, just uh, a very short introduction. Um, I do want to add before the introduction uh, that counselor Brian Pine was unable to make it. He had a family emergency. Um, and he did answer the questions in the questionnaire, but unfortunately there was some technical issues and he was not able to access them uh, from where he is tonight. Um, but he does have uh, Erhard who is here, who is uh, going to give some opening remarks in Brian's place. Um, so Sharon, if you, if you wanna begin. What is the time for this? One, one minute. One minute, yeah. okay, thank you. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, I'm really glad to see you all. Um, and I'm glad that you, the renters have found their voice as, as a group um, and actually weighed in on the housing summit and said, wait a minute to the city council and the administration, you're not answering, you're not addressing our concerns. Um, and that made us stop and realize that it was more focused on um, a lot of other issues, but not specifically on concerns for renters. The report that came from the administration um, also identified one vulnerability that I just want to highlight, the fact that during evictions, um, and when evictions are because of, of a lack of being able to pay your rent, um, most of the evictions happen because you don't have legal representation. That is something that resonated for me, and it's moving through the ACLU at the state level um, to try to address that. That's one of the things that I think 
the city council can do to make that more effective for you. I'm gonna stop now. There are so many other things to sp speak about, but that is one thing that I think is really important. So thank you again. Hi, I'm Zariah Hightower. Um, I'm running in huge part because of Burlington's housing problems. Um, I am not like, this is not helping my career. This isn't doing anything. I'm just doing this and partially, honestly, the day that I decided to run um, was at a Burlington Tenants Union meeting, and I was like, okay, like we need somebody in representation who isn't just talking about this, who doesn't need to be told, hey, you haven't thought about the tenants or the tenants' rights, but who actually wants to progressively push them forward. Um, I have lived in other cities, and when I moved to Burlington, it definitely struck me that how for progressive it can be in other ways. It's um, insane how few tenants' rights um, and how weak our tenants' rights are. So I'm really looking forward to working on that first and foremost um, and really representing tenants in particular. I'll just briefly introduce myself. My name is Jillian Scannell. I'm running for city council in Ward 1. I'm currently a senior at UVM and student body president. I've been a tenant uh, the past uh, probably three or four years, I'd say. Um, and I'll just leave it at that if you have any questions um, that I'm not able to answer tonight or I don't have enough time, feel free to, to reach out um, at another point. But I really just want to get going this evening. So thank you. I'm Ryan Nick. I'm running in Ward 2 for City Council. Um, you know, one of the main drivers behind why I'm running is that I worry that I won't be able to afford to live here uh, in the coming years. Um, and really wanted to do something about it and have a positive impact on my community. Um, you know, I, I look forward to answering your questions. Uh, just reading over the documents and the questionnaire has been um, a very informative experience and it's, you know, taught me a lot about uh, your movement and what you guys are seeking. Um, and I look forward to hearing your questions and learning more about it. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Max Tracy. I'm currently the city councilor for Ward 2 uh, in the Old North End. I've been on the city council the last eight years. Uh, and during that time, uh, I've stood up against an administration that's tried to uh, really push neoliberal policies that have benefited the wealthy in this city uh, to the you know to the detriment, I think, of, of the great majority of, of tenants and renters in the city. And that is really, in my mind, grounded in this ideology that if we just build more housing, that that alone will solve the housing crisis. Um, but I think that what we've seen is that uh, that really is not working for uh, many people. Rents continue to rise in the city. So I think that everything needs to be on the table when we think about housing, and that includes rent control. Can we, can we just let uh, Earhart in, just because Brian is word three, if, if, if you don't mind him sneaking in. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Awkward. Um, so, um, my name is Erhard Monk. I appreciate a uh, moment to speak on behalf of uh, Brian. I uh, actually used to be a city councilor from Ward 1, um, so, and I've worked with Brian for many, many years. Um, so I, I've got a brief text from him that I wanted to, uh, that he asked me to share. Um, he says, um, I am uh, tired, uh, excuse me, I am tied to my mother's house without internet and deep into planning for her home health care needs. This is urgent for me. So he apologizes for not being able to be here. This kind of happened as an emergency. The general comment that he'd like me to share with you tonight is um, he'd like me to um, explain, uh, number one, that he did send a completed survey uh, on February 9th, uh, got the news late this Wednesday night uh, that the file was blank. Uh, my mistake, and I apologize. I got my start in politics with tenants' rights and have been a housing activist and professional for over 30 years. I support the goals of the Tenants' Union and will continue to work together to protect tenants and expand tenants' rights. On rent control, I prefer to focus time and energy on struggles that are winnable and can deliver for tenants now rather than a multi-year battle with no chance of victory at the legislature. Just cause eviction, expanding protections from retaliatory evictions, expanding housing board of review jurisdiction, and updating the rental housing code are issues that can galvanize tenants and homeowners and nonprofits and make a real impact without relying on an anti-tenant legislature. Since we, says so since he and I see eye to eye, um, asked me to be his surrogate tonight, but I, I just have to say I'm not going to speak for Brian other than this. Um, we actually have a bit of a plumbing emergency at home, so I'm going to excuse myself um, and try to fix that tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, 
Hi, um, I'm Sarah Carpenter and I'm running for uh, council in Ward 4. I'm very excited to really get back involved locally with the city. I retired last year after a long professional career in housing with the Vermont Housing Finance Agency and with Cathedral Square Housing. And I'm hoping that I can bring some of that insight um, back home. Currently, I'm working as a volunteer with some statewide legislation that would require housing code enforcement statewide. It would require a landlord directory statewide. It would fund a back rent program and put some money in for legal representation statewide, um, as well as try to get more resources for housing. So that's, um, I, I'm anxious to get your feedback, but I, that's what I've been working on. Hello everybody, my name is Nate Lantieri. I'm running for City Council in Ward 5. Um, I'm a, a renter, I have been for the last five years. And um, I just wanna start out by saying, I'm so glad that the Tenants Union has come into existence in these past few years. Um, I remember in like not that long ago thinking that uh, the power dynamic in between landlords and tenants was at such a disparity that we needed to work collectively to have a stronger voice. You know, we are 60% of the people of this city and so often that voice is kept out of the conversation. So I am so glad to see that uh, the Tenants Union is getting stronger and I hope that through my campaign and through the next few years on council, we can make sure that your tenants' voices are heard, that they're represented at the table and that their best interests are uh, really at the forefront as we're really trying to make a people's version of Burlington moving forward. Thank you. Thanks, hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Karen Paul. I am the city councilor in Ward 6. And um, I'd like to also echo what others have said in thanking the Burlington Tenants Union for hosting this event. Um, and I also want to uh, also want to add that I value the work that the Burlington Tenants Union is doing. And I think that the message of your membership and your constituency um, is getting out there. And I do think that you are being heard. I know that I um, I am hearing you, um, and I am listening. Um, in that vein, uh, this evening, I look forward to hearing from people that are here this evening um, and talking about your concerns, about your struggles, about what you love about living in Burlington and what you feel that we can do better. Um, you know, being, uh, being a renter, um, being a landlord, is a, a, unique, um, a unique relationship. Um, and more so perhaps than any other group of residents in this city, um, because those of you who are renters are so reliant on someone else for a basic necessity of life, I think that you more so than perhaps anyone else um, deserve and need to, to know that your elected officials um, are here to assist you, um, to support you, to listen, and to act. And um, again, thank you for asking me to participate. I'm looking forward to this evening. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ali Jang, and I am currently the city council for Ward 7 in the new North End. We have less renters there, uh, but it seems in Burlington we have more renters than homeowners. I'm one of the homeowners, but I was a renter for over eight years and someone who came to this country only 13 years ago. So I understand what it means. Me, my stand is always about affordable roof. Renters have a privilege, but we also have homeless people who are here in this community, and they're not organized like you are. The problem of housing is bigger than just renters, um, homeowners, but it's also more than all of that. Our focus should be, how do we make sure that everyone reside in Burlington is under a roof? That's a bigger picture for me. And I'm a community organizer. I became city council in 2007, and I tried to serve everyone in Burlington to the best of my abilities. Thank you for having us. Hello everybody, my name is Adam Roof. I'm your current Ward 8 city councilor and I've lived in that neighborhood for about 10 years, which I did the math out recently and that means I've spent over $100,000 in rent in my time living here in Burlington, which uh, is just, uh, I never really thought of it like that in, until recently and it's just daunting to think that's what I've um, invested in really nothing. So, um, you know, two things that I've been you know, grateful to be a part of as part of my time in the city council has been sitting on the 
Housing Trust Fund Administrative Board, which gets to uh, deploy the dollars that are brought to bear by our Housing Trust Fund. Um, to, those dollars are leveraged to create affordable housing in real ways, and that's been something that was rewarding. Also, leading a, a handful of homelessness initiatives uh, with my friend Stephen Marshall here in the front row. We work together a lot, um, including working on a partnership to make sure that our our housing, uh, our, our homelessness shelter was able to open this fall. Um, I'm a believer in public policy and do believe that we need to add more housing to our housing market, but we can't stop there because if we do, then we're not doing our job. We need to be uh, looking at a comprehensive strategy when it comes to affordable housing and not just addressing the cost side, but also the income side, which I think does not get enough attention when talking about the affordability equation because there are two sides of that. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jane Stromberg, and I'm running for City Council in Ward 8. And I just want to also thank the Tenants Union for hosting this. And also, huge shout out to Food Not Bombs. Like, that was awesome, y'all. Like, and delicious. I have a bun. Um, so, the message, if you've seen my signs around the city, is people on the planet over profit. I am extremely frustrated with the direction that we're going in as a city. And yeah, rent is expensive. And we are, I'm working two jobs currently to pay rent. And I'm extremely terrified at the pace and direction that city government with such a background in development um, is, is taking us. And you know, our, we, we're being irresponsible and we're not bringing in as many people into the conversation as possible. And that's why I look up to this organization because this is that first step in doing so. Um, but we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. And I really want to hold our landlords accountable through landlord licensing. We need rent control in the city and not just like a plan and not just like this kind of conversation around it. We need to actually enact rent control and, and enforce that. And it has to be done in a responsible manner and in, in a way that is um, inclusionary. But there's a lot of affordability issues that we need to focus on. Uh, you know, wages, all of those things are under that umbrella. So that is a huge priority of mine. And um, yeah, holding our landlords accountable, holding UVM accountable to creating more um, housing on campus that's affordable and just an increase in numbers. Um, there's, yeah, there's a ton that we need to address. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now that we have heard introductions, which was impressive, I think almost everyone got around one minute, so congratulations. Um, it would be great to hear from tenants. So anyone who wants to come up, uh, who has a question that they would like to ask, uh, this is your time. You've got over 10 counselors here right now. Uh, I can start with, um, a question that we got earlier this week. Uh, if you are elected, what will you do for low-income and affordable housing residents in Burlington? Specifically, what would you be willing to do to assist affordable housing residents who are being victimized by unfair and unethical treatment by Burlington Housing Authority? Um, and so we'll start on the right, Sharon, and work our way down. and. Anyone has a question, if you want to pass, please feel free to, in just 30 seconds. So I, I must admit, I don't know the um, nature of the unethical treatment from Burlington Housing Authority, um, and so I would have benefited from hearing an example. Um, Certainly, I want fair and equitable housing, and if there is, um, if there is something that is, is presented that the tenant needs, once again, I started off with saying that tenants are vulnerable because oftentimes they represent themselves or don't have some legal representation. So. I come back to that as one of the ways to empower them in, in a d dispute where there is an unfair balance of power. All right, um, thank, thank, thank you. you. Maybe gonna have a hard time keeping this to 30 seconds. It will be um, hard. <laughs> I think 
I, I first want to say, I think I'm the only one of the candidates in Ward 1 who's even bothered to knock on the Champlain Housing Trust units and ask them if they're having troubles with that landlord, which makes me angry when I see multiple flyers um, in neighborhoods whose voices are regularly represented. And so I think, first of all, if you're talking about giving them a voice, you need to listen to that voice um, first and foremost to really start that conversation, um, and then listen to what they actually want and how they're struggling to make the difference between um, what federal subsidies will pay and how much th that housing actually costs. I hope that was short enough. Thank you. I think of that a lot of the time, not all the time, but quite frequently, um, renters don't know when they're being treated unfairly. Um, certainly if it's, it's very clear, uh, that's one thing, but a lot of the times they don't know their rights um, as tenants and what do you do if you feel like you're being treated unfairly um, and how do you know if that's the case? Um, so I think something that um, it's helpful in these in these cases, and, and like Sharon said, I don't know the exact um, situation in this, um, but I think it's good um, the more that we do around um, tenants' rights and helping folks and doing educational outreach um, so folks know prior um, to getting into these issues um, what, what, they, what their role is and what their rights are in these cases. Thank you. So, uh, you know, I think going off of Jillian's answer, um, which I think was great, uh, that if there are specific instances of people being victimized by the Burlington Housing Authority, which uh, sounds terrible um, and shouldn't happen under any circumstances, uh, they need a way to, you know, access the city and report that kind of behavior so we can hold the landlords who are, you know, committing these crimes against tenants uh, accountable. Um, and so I think we need to look at ways to open up pathways of communication um, so that these, you know, incidents can be reported um, in a way that can be, <coughs> excuse me, tracked. Um, so yeah, they can be taken care of in a way that makes sure the landlord's held accountable. Thank you. Uh, so um, this is something that I know is an issue and I know that, that, that that's the case because I've been, uh, just this week, um, I supported someone who was dealing with a situation uh, around this and um, went with them and supported them um, at BHA and, uh, and help them with their, their situation. So um, this is something that I'm aware of and that I'm directly working with folks on um, and I'm happy to show up. But I think it's more than just that direct individual outreach. It's more uh, about also making sure that there's a sense of inclusion of these folks because oftentimes they're forgotten in conversation. So uh, one of the things that we're discussing in Burlington is that in advance of the, the uh, passenger rail being restored, um, there's a need to store a train. And one of the sites that we're thinking of storing that train is right below Burlington Housing Authority. And so wanting those tenants to know exactly what uh, the impacts of that would be, I didn't want them to have to come all the way down to Pine Street. So I'm, I, as chair of transportation committee, I scheduled a meeting at BHA. And then before that meeting, I went through BHA, the, the Riverside Apartments, and knocked on every single door uh, and let people know about that meeting and talked about what was going on there. So it's not just about the, the individual outreach, which is important. It's also making sure that you expand and, out, and reach out to people about issues that will impact their daily lives. Thank you. The Burlington Housing Authority is a city entity. Its board is appointed by the city. I actually should know better whether it's the mayor or the council that appoints it. Um, so I would start there with active commissioners. In my opinion, the board is too small, so I would advocate to expand it uh, and certainly add tenant representation. And I'd really work at the board level. I, I can say there's been some leadership changes there. Uh, I, I do not know the new director, but I would certainly suggest that we, the city, organize um, with them and really focus on the new leadership and really expanding or filling out the board uh, to be more inclusive. Thank you. So the BHA is, is, uh, is uh, one of the larger landlords in Ward 5. There's several apartment buildings. There's the Bobbin Mill, Wharf Lanes. There's apartments on Maple Street. And as I'm knocking those doors, I'm talking to people and hearing similar stories. Fear of retaliation, fear of eviction, um, for speaking out. Problematic property managers that are uh, asking things or not providing services because of whatever that system might be. And we have to remember that uh, despite their role in the affordable housing situation, they are a landlord. And there is an incredible power dynamic there. So, uh, especially in these communities, it's often a feeling that an individual voice is not strong enough to take on this institution. So meeting these people where they are, explaining to them that the city council is working for them and 
collectivizing them, making sure that they have a strong organizing in each of these buildings to, to show that you know, you are not alone in this struggle. This is a collective thing. These issues are not stopping at your door. They're part of this system and, and we have to fight back against that injustice. So Thank really you. meeting people where they are is an important thing. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Um, uh, just to expand on what Sarah had said, as far as the BHA board, it is very small. It is the only board that is actually appointed solely by the mayor. The city council uh, does not vote on that. And for quite some time, and I've expressed this to two different mayors, the mayor that we have now and the one before him, that I think there is a problem with that, that we should have, that, that the, per, the people that serve on that board um, should be more reflective of the community. Um, that's one thing. Uh, the other is that uh, in actually in a, I've never heard the story that Max, Max just to, uh, told, but I was also in a similar situation of someone living in uh, BHA housing uh, who felt very powerless uh, for a situation that had occurred in her apartment. Um, and I did go with her to BHA to help her resolve that. We did resolve it, um, but, and I was glad that I helped her, but what I also realized was that without me, she probably wouldn't have gotten what she was looking for. And that is not right. Thank you. Um, thank you. Sorry. No, that's all right. Run on. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think it would be important about, the question would be very specific about what you will do. Uh, it is important to go to my website, Ali Jang, dot com, A-L-I-D-I-E-N-G, to really see more about my stand around housing. But to this question, um, I am also the founder and manager of the Burlington School District Parents University, which is an educational program for parents um, of students in the Burlington School District. And I partnered with Vermont Legal Aid um, to come to the school and teach parents their rights uh, in, in in housing and many, many stuff. And also worked directly as a board member at CVOO. I brought so many parents holding their hands, bring them to CVOO to get their needs addressed and also met. Education and action is always what is required to serve the most vulnerable in our community. Thank you. Ali, I think you and I agree on this one. I think it, ed education and resources are critical for, for addressing something like this. And you know, when there are power dynamics that are not level you, you need in order to level the playing field in a situation like this i do think that you need to provide lower barrier access to legal representation as well as advocacy and victim support um, you can do that in a, in, a, in a few different ways but i think it needs to be much like ali was was wise enough to do is to bring that support to where people are at too often and you know in the five years of sitting on the city council too often this room is does not feel accessible to too many and you need to get a lot of times out of city hall and out of the halls of, or chambers of authority and meet people where they are and educate them on how to find you as well. Um, I do think that an expansion of, of the board would, would be wise and we could also consider expanding the role and authority of our housing board of review. But absolutely, I think any city councilor should commit to doing that direct engagement because it is highly effective. I see some people, some tenants here tonight that I've helped with over the last couple of years on things that have been very serious and things that are kind of squirrely as well. Um, and Thank that you. sort of direct engagement is, is absolutely important. This is part of a larger systemic issue, obviously. And um, you know, while I was door knocking on College Street a few months ago, I talked to a tenant on College Street that said their landlord, when their uh, plumber, plumbing quit for whatever reason something happened they had to shut off a valve to their main bathroom told them to go up the street and use the waterman building facilities at uvm and this was i don't know about a week and a half after they even tried to get in contact with this landlord and they had to pay out of pocket to get their plumbing fixed and they had no idea what to do i mean there's there's a lot of unanswered questions so our tenants don't know their rights in general and the rights that are currently in place are not strong enough, then they need to be strengthened. So we need to hold our landlords accountable through a licensing system. And um, you know, our, I think tenants need to be represented on every single board and commission in the city. That's just a fact. Thank you. So, yeah. 
Hi, my name is Emily Reynolds. I am a member of the Burlington Tenants Union, and the struggles of homeless people was mentioned, and I want to emphasize that the Tenant Union stands in solidarity with all people struggling with homelessness. This union is your union. When we say tenants, we mean all people who are deprived of the human right to dignified housing, which they own and control. So I want to ask the council and um, people looking to become part of the council, what is your opinion on the right to camp and the statewide homeless bill that's being passed? All right, so we'll give 30 seconds. If you want to give a yes or a no, you, you, you support it or not, that also works too. Um, so how about we start, um, we'll start down, down Ward 8. Um, well, I do support, yeah. I uh, support the bill, the State House. Um, I also think that, that we do have, we, we do in the city now have uh, a, a program in place, a policy in place that does allow folks to, to camp in, in, in our city. That was a, a long policy battle that, that was had in the Public Safety Committee. It also involved um, a, a legal challenge by the ACLU, which, uh, which I was very close to and, and worked on, and just recently in the Public Safety Committee, which I chair, we've approved a policy that does create space for folks uh, to camp uh, without being bothered. Yeah, I think it is important also when we say homeless, um, they camping, but they pay, they camping where exactly? If it's a private property, I don't think it is right. But if it is a public property, I think it is important for them to let the city know we want to camp here. And if the city allows it, they have all the right to be there. But sometimes also there are issues around safety among people who are experiencing homelessness. And as member, former member of the um, um, Public Safety Committee, you know, we did brought up what we call the homelessness empower, uh, encampment policy. So we cannot also just come and say, oh, you have to get out here. No, there are restrictions in which we have to approach the issue, giving them notices to get out, and also making sure that their belongings are not just thrown away. Thank you. So, all right. Thanks. Um, I'll, I'll be quick. I, I do support the city's policy. Um, first and foremost, I just want for, uh, for people who want to camp to, to be safe. Thank you. I do support the right to camp. Um, I think when we're looking at the cost of living in the city versus the available wages, you know, it, it's no surprise that people are, are struggling to find housing in this city. And I, and I want to make one other point in regards to homelessness. Part of why I'm running, uh, while I was working for the city, there was a person that um, was empowered by city government who uh, was a head of a commission that I was a part of that was trying to further cr criminalize homelessness in this city. The fact that that is a reality in our city in the year 2020 is absolutely abhorrent to me that we as a forward-thinking city are, are still having people that are empowered to have this, um, this viewpoint with such a connection to the powers that be in the city. Um, so I, I'll you. just leave that at that. <laughs> um, I do support the um, Homeless Bill of Rights, which is being considered in the State House. Um, I also feel we really need to uh, and I'm supportive of the city's um, policy on camping, but beyond that, I think we've got a lot more work to do with our neighboring communities. Because someone ends up being homeless in the city of Burlington is really a function of a lack of housing in South Burlington and Colchester and Winooski, and those folks are not, in my opinion, putting as n enough of a fair share into the resources we need on the homeless side. So I do support the right to camp. I think that we need to move towards uh, a, we need to continually fight any attempts to criminalize homelessness. I cut my teeth uh, in sort of political organizing in this city, organizing against a sitting ban where they were trying to ban sitting on the street. Um, and these kinds of ridiculous things um, continue to be sort of the tools that people think will cleanse the downtown of, of things that they don't want to see or don't want to admit exist in our city. And so we have to keep an eye out for those things and resist those kinds of, those kinds of actions and those kinds of ideologies. Apologies, um, because that is absolutely disgusting and shameful. So I support the city's current policy on homelessness, and you know I, I really think the focus should be on the safeties of these individuals. Um, but furthermore, I think 
we need to really put a lot of effort into finding the services that will help these people lift them out of um, homelessness and housing insecurity. Um, you, you know, I think Burlington has an incredible wealth of resources um, and incredible services available, and we need to help, you know, sort of line the people who need the services and support um, up with the organizations that offer it. I do support the uh, current bill in the in the house right now. Um, in regards to homelessness in the in the city of Burlington, though, um, I think that it's important that, as other folks have said, that we can't be criminalizing homelessness because homelessness, more often than not, is a result of the environment that you've been in, and you can't control that. Um, so we need to find places um, where city government can. Um, implement and kind of put itself in spots where um, we can fix the environment that has created uh, this situation for so many people. Also support the right to camp um, and I think I'm going to give you one of your bingo words and say we need to um, go against nimbyism especially of homeowners who are afraid of their home value dropping if you put um, long-term shelters uh, near their home which are also sorely needed. Thank you. I do support the, the right to camp and the policy also now protects people's belongings um, because I know many of you might have experienced the horrific, you know, uh, taking apart an, an encampment and then discarding people's belongings, but now they will be stored for a period of time and that's really important. All right, thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Laura Mistretta, and I just want to thank the Burlington Tenants Union for putting together this event and all the counselors who are here and candidates. Thank you so much. Um, and it's exciting to see that a conversation about tenants' rights, you know, goes beyond just housing um, because, and it, you know, acknowledging it's a basic need, but there are other basic needs impacting our tenants. Um, and so tonight, my question is, you know, among some of our most vulnerable tenants are folks who are undocumented, not currently citizens, or may look like other people who are not citizens. Um, the No Mas Polimigra campaign here in Burlington aims to close the four loopholes in Burlington's fair and impartial policing policy to no longer allow Burlington Police Department to um, discriminate in their policing and collaborate with ICE or Border Patrol at unnecessary times. So my question for everyone here is whether you're currently on the city council or vying to be on the city council, will you vote yes on the resolution provided by the No Mas Poli Migra campaign and migrant justice without accepting any amendments? Thank you. All right, so let's start uh, Ward 4 and then go to Ward 8 and then uh, go to 1. Switch it up. Yes or no? Uh, uh, I have not read the uh, resolution in whole, so I cannot answer that without having read it. I do support a much stronger uh, policing policy or uh, fair and impartial policing policy. Going up, yeah, going up, okay. going up. Uh, I, I do support the No Mass Polymigra movement and, and uh, as it is written, um, I think it is somewhat shameful that uh, the issue was punted to after town meeting day. Um, I think that it's something, if we're talking about having a just city, that is the definition of justice. Of um, and, and I think it's also important to note that uh, my opponent, who is actually not here tonight, um, I would like to know what his opinion is on this as well. Um, and I think that it would be interesting to uh, have folks ask him what his opinion is as well. Thank you. Uh, so thanks very much uh, for asking that question. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, I actually have read the resolution. The answer not only is yes, but uh, I was approached about that, about this resolution and the entire issue months ago um, and uh, have, was approached by two different people, um, both committed to them in writing as well as over the phone that yes, I will be supporting it. I'm sorry that it didn't come to the council um, at the last meeting, it, it should have, it's ready to go, um, but that's not my call. Um, but I will be supporting it when it comes uh, at our next meeting. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Yep, um, I am supportive, but at the same time, I am also not a lawyer. But we also need to rely on the advices of our city attorney, you know, to make sure that everything that we pass in the city here is in accordance with our constitution, with the state laws, right? But if it comes here, vetted by our city attorney, I definitely will support it. Thank you. 
Um, well, I think I'll start just by saying if, if you hadn't seen the news or if you weren't here, there was really a powerful demonstration of folks that came on Monday uh, in support of, of, this, of this idea and this resolution. Uh, and I just want to say thank you for them. If it was to be on the city, if it was on the agenda on that Monday, I would have voted yes and I intend to vote on it. I intend to vote yes on it. I believe it's March 9th is the date. Uh, and I've been supportive of this direction for, for months. Uh, when I was approached months ago about the idea, I was supportive. Then as it became more concrete and more concrete, I like the direction that it's going. I do think there, there may be some, some still some tweaks, but um, I'm not sure if that's true or, or not. I'm seeing some, some yes, some nodding, but I intend to, to vote for what I would have on Monday as well. Thank you. Just gonna remind council candidates to please speak into the mic as closely as you can for the most part. I am extremely supportive of this. Um, that's no, no doubt about that. Um, I think that we can do more as a city. We can't call ourselves a forward thinking progressive city. Um, it, we, we had to have that demonstration. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's sad and that's unfortunate that people are feeling so edged out of our community and so unprotected. Um, so I just, I hope that we stand all of us in solidarity with them and work with them and hear them every step of the way. And on March 9th, everyone needs to be voting yes with no tweaks. Thank you. Uh, now we'll go to Sharon and go back up. So, um, I will be supporting the resolution. Um, when it was incredible outreach. They educated every member of the city council um, and answered all questions. And there were some, I had some asks about making some minor revisions, um, not to, de to, to dilute it, but I had some questions about how things were phrased. And um, the statement was that it really needed to be identical to what Winooski passed. It really needed to be the same resolution. Um, I respect that and I intend to vote for, absolutely vote for it. Um, uh, thank God Burlington is moving in the right direction as opposed to the way the U.S. and the president is moving. Um, but I am concerned if indeed, I don't w ever want to mislead anyone, if indeed the city attorney says something to us that we we can't do something, I'll have to consider that, but I will make my statement that the strength in this is to keep it the way it is, exactly. Uh, yes, I support it. I think it was one of my first social media posts um, when I started running last year. I also think that there's a little bit of a fear of um, like how it aligns with federal policy and so on. I think there's plenty of other places where the city has said, we'll do it now and ask for forgiveness later when it's not pro-social justice. So I think we can definitely do it when it is. Um, pretty short and sweet. Yes, I support it. I would have supported it if I was on council on Monday, and I uh, would, if, if I was counselor, I would support it. Yes, no problem. Thank you. Uh, if elected, I'll absolutely support it. Um, I think it's an incredible movement, and I was really inspired by the demonstration on Monday night. Um, I wasn't able to be here, but I live streamed it later that night, and I just think it was great that the community, unfortunate that it had to happen, but great that there was such support within the community. So I've been working on this for the last several months, working actually with the organizers. So um, not just live streaming, but actually showing up and working with organizers uh, to pass a policy uh, that is meaningful and that gives necessary protection to folks who are feeling really vulnerable right now. And so um, it's important to actually dig in and do the work um, when, the, when we see these social justice issues and show up. And I've done that and I will continue to do that. There's more work that we need to do to make sure that this policy um, passes legal scrutiny, but I'm prepared to do that work collaborating with other uh, progressive city councilors. So I think we can and we will pass a policy on March 9th. And I'm proud to support that policy, proud to have worked on it. And I just want to thank Migrant Justice for their leadership on this issue. Uh, if thank you don't you. know, Migrant Justice is one of the just un most unbelievable organizations going in Vermont. Thank right you, now. Max. All right, uh, let's move on to the next question. Hi, thank you to um, people who are running and all the counselors that took the time to come tonight. And thank you for the tenant union, tenants union for um, having this. Um, I have a question about policing. I am 43 and last year I was stopped for the first time and told that I matched the description. What are you gonna do on the disparity of policing in this city now that we have numbers that actually show it is a larger problem than we first thought? 
All right, um, let's start uh, Ward 3 and work our way down, 30 seconds. So Max, do you want to start? And we'll work our way down the wards and then go back around. Okay. Uh, so um, I've been one of the, the louder voices, honestly, on the city council for years, uh, advocating for expanded community oversight. In 2017, uh, I supported a resolution uh, advocating for us looking at a variety of different community oversight models uh, and trying to take what we thought would be best from those models in order to expand uh, the, the authority of the police commission. That resolution didn't pass, and I think had it passed, we might be in a very different place than we are today. So I think we need to continue to fight um, to expand community oversight. I'm prepared to, to do that, and I've shown that continuously um, by, again, showing up um, to uh, different meetings like the police commission, going and asking for that additional meeting with the police commission chair and other police uh, commissioners uh, to really say that they're that things it, that they don't have enough authority that we need to expand it what are their ideas for expanding that authority um, but then also really calling out bad Thank behavior you, by police um, I think it's important to call it call that out for what it is which is uh, you know just absolutely wrong Thank you we'll go we'll go this way towards me towards me So I think it is really terrible that people um, have had experiences like this with the police, uh, you know, related to the stalking and the use of force um, that we've seen recently. Um, we need to work on restoring trust between the public and the police force. Um, I think it's really important that, you know, you see the police as like a sign of safety and not a sign of harm. Um, and whatever needs to be done, including, you know, increasing um, tenants' voices in the community or people's voices in the community um, or you know, really expanding robust community policing, I think, you know, we need to move forward in this direction. Uh, firstly, I just want to say thank you for sharing your experience, and I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Um, in regards to how our police are are acting, and I think it goes back to how they're, it, sometimes it goes back to how they're trained, and I think that we need to look um, at what Burlington is doing different than the state. I mean, if we look at all the police officers in the state, they're all trained at the same, same academy, they all have the same training, but as all of you know, Burlington is not the same place as the rest of the state, both demographically and, and in many other ways as well. So I think we need to look at the policy um, and the training that goes on at the state academy and see if that um, fits and is enough um, for citizens in Burlington and I mean clearly it's not enough so so Thank what you. can we do more um, yeah I would say it's yes also a factor of training but more importantly I think it's a question of citizen oversight um, and strengthening that oversight to hold uh, members of the police force and the police force in general accountable I do think I definitely feel safer in Burlington than I have in other cities it's it's not a high bar and um, I think that we need to continue, and the only reason they are slightly better is because we've continued, we have pushed them over years and we need to continue to do that pushing. Um, and again, raising the voices of people who um, actually are impacted by this and talking to our neighbors who are worried about, um, who have been stopped even when they were teenagers and told that they match descriptions in our community, not in New York City, in Burlington. Thank you. So, you know, we had a survey and it showed that we discriminated based on, uh, there were more stops for people of color. Um, so one survey is not the end of it. Then if we then educate and train, we have to resurvey to see are we doing, are we getting better or do we need to use other tactics? I also believe that expansion of the responsibilities for the police commission, more community engagement, and more review of policies to really address this um, are essential. Thank you. All right. We need an accountability-centered police contract in this city, and we need to focus on serious, real reform. And yes, education is a huge thing. Mark Hughes um, passionately spoke about this uh, very issue at one of the one, uh, Ward 1E NPAs. Um, a few weeks ago, and he was livid because this was right after the Del Pozo incident. This was, that was horrendous that that happened, and um, that's just like a, a beacon for such systemic issues. So, you know, we even have a city north of us, Montreal, a lot of the public safety officials don't even carry guns. That's how well-trained they are. They don't even need to actually have that as that backup. 
which is amazing. And we need to get to that point. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with 21st century, and policing in the 21st century requires us to consistently be reviewing our policing policies, not reviewing them just when something happens. Um, and I think we learned that in a real way when there are some, a, a number of instances in our community that said, hey, we, we need to focus on this. And I think we realized that we had not been sufficiently reviewing our policies in a consistent enough manner. You can go on a, a, a lot of different ways, need, a lot of different things need to be done to address this. But I think it starts with, maybe not starts, but I think a critical component that isn't talked enough about is how we do recruitment. We need to be recruiting from a diverse pool of qualified applicants so that those who are being policed see themselves in those who are policing them in many times. Um, I'm also really proud of the work that the 15-member Special Committee on Policing uh, was able to accomplish. I had a, a big hand in putting that committee together, and just on Monday, that report <clears throat> came forward from them, and the Public Safety Committee will be working on a, a work plan for those recommendations. Um, yep, I, like, um, policing in the 21st century should be something that we should not take lightly. It is very serious because the life of the people depend on it. The institutions that are supposed to safeguard the safety and well-being of everyone, if they make mistake, I do believe that we need a deep, a deep, deeper re review of our policing policy, and not just like policies that are like cosmetic justice around what happened. Things hurt, people are being hurt, and I think my focus personally is for the city of Burlington to have a great and wonderful police chief in the next year to come, or soon. Uh, thanks. I um, wanted to thank the person who, uh, who spoke, and I appreciate very much your speaking your truth. It's, uh, it's not mine, um, but I feel as an elected official that I grow by you expressing um, what has happened to you. Um, and as I said, I'm sorry that it, it has happened to you. Um, we did get a report on Monday night uh, with a lot of information. Um, I think that it's important that we use that as a working document. Uh, not let it be shelved, uh, and we do need uh, greater oversight, greater citizen oversight. Um, I did vote for all of the current members of the police commission, the three that came up recently, and uh, um, and I'm glad that I did. Uh, I thank think. You, thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think in our community, it's important to recognize that it's no coincidence that the most, uh, some of the most recent use of force cases have been uh, people of color and people experiencing mental illness. I do not think that that's a coincidence, and I think we need to call that for what it is. Um, so community oversight in regards to the true system that is our, our police force, um, you know, in regards to the special working group on policing, from my understanding, the resolutions that came out of that were not truly able to uh, dramatically change the system that we have because of the political nature of it. I would like to see a true oversight process that's apolitical. It's not from within the police force as we saw with the oversight in the Del Pozo case. Um, we need to have a, a review of our actual system from an outsider perspective that's able to really uh, suggest some, some radical change to the way that we're actually doing thank, police in this city. Um, I certainly would support um, more independent oversight, and it's clear from the incidents in the last number of months um, that, that that should should happen. Um, I am hopeful that the recruitment process for the new chief um, will truly get a lot of um, citizen input and scrutiny. I think the culture of a department really depends on its leaders, and we need to make sure that that happens and is reflective. Thank you. Um, so right now it is 7.55. We do have the space till 8.30, so if everyone is all right sticking around till about 8.15, because we started a little late, um, tr we'll try to get through these questions. Um, you know, there's a lot of counselors here, so if you have a specific question for a specific counselor or your ward, please feel free to direct it towards them, uh, just so that, you know, we could try to answer more questions. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Jack, and I am a UVM student. I have a basic Jack, can you, can you uh, speak into the mic a bit more? Hello, my name is Jack, and I am a UVM student, and I have a basic uh, question regarding weatherizations, the weatherization of homes. Um, do you support mandatory rental weatherization that requires all rental properties to meet a baseline efficiency standard? All right, so just a quick yes or no. Um, Sharon, we'll start with you and just go right down the list. 
You just want yes or no. Just a yes or a no. Do you support it? <laughs> yes, no, maybe. <laughs> it's really hard to say, yes, I support it. I'll leave it at that, okay? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, but I wish there was rent control with it. <laughs> yes. Depends, but yes. <laughs> we could do this one together. You want to do it together? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Wow, she beat me. She beat me. Great. All right. Uh, next question. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to the Tenants Union for hosting. Uh, so I'll start by saying I would guess that all of you share similar goals for housing, that everyone has affordable, safe, quality housing. Uh, the disagreement comes with how to get there. So. Uh, some of you do seem to be advocating for rent control and some forms that are pretty far-reaching. Uh, nationally, economists have pretty unanimously agreed that in the long run, rent control harms the housing stock and hurts low-income residents. Uh, what are you seeing that I'm not or they're not? Thank you. Is that, uh, that is, we have like 15 minutes. That is a question. I, would, I think if we got through that, that's all we would get through. Um, I would say that the Burlington Tenants Union uh, very much disagrees with that assessment, um, that there's been a lot of other studies I would, done. I would wonder what they're seeing that the economists aren't. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about it afterwards. Um, a lot of those economists are, are fairly conservative and there's some new data that's come forward. Um, if you want to ask whether they support rent control, I mean, we got to keep it to like a yes or no sure. at this yeah, point. Yeah, let's, let's start with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you support uh, rent control? Yes or no? Maybe, with exceptions, starting uh, from down there. Yes. What kind? There, there's so many different types of rent control policy. I'm not trying to be con contrarian here, but there's, there's many different ways of doing rent control. And... In some ways, yes, and in other ways, that cause perverse outcomes? Obviously not. I think we should all agree to that. Yeah, to the extent that uh, landlords cannot just increase the, 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 the price of rent whenever they want, to that extent, yes. Well, Ali took, uh, took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly what I would say. I think that it's a, a question of finding balance um, so that it works and does not have unintended consequences. Um, but I am certainly open to that, yes. I would say the model that uh, if we're moving forward with it, some sort of vacancy control so that it's not tied to tenure of residence, it's more tied to unit, as well as um, inclu including considerations so that apartments can't just be immediately transferred into condos. Um, I think that is part of the policy package moving forward, certainly. I think all of the options, vacancy control, rent control, should be on the table and we need to study them. And like Councillor Pine um, said in his opening statement, we need to understand that that's in the environment of needing state enabling legislation and where do we put our political capital to keep the rents low. Uh, I'm done with market-driven solutions to, to solving housing problems and I think that we need to move towards a, a rent control model here in, in Burlington. I understand that that's gonna be hard but I think we need to build a social movement here uh, of tenants. Um, I went to the Tenants Summit and was inspired by what I saw there and by the energy there and I'm inspired by the Tenants Union and the power that you're building. We still have a long way to go but I wanna be part of that. I wanna work with you. I wanna collaborate with you uh, in ways that feel good to you and the, the folks that, that, that are working with you uh, in order to enact those policies. Thank you. I would say largely it depends on the specifics of the proposal. Um, I know we, in many forms, we already have rent control in Burlington, um, but you know I would worry about some of the unintended effects of um, rent control writ large. Uh, yeah, I'm open to the idea, um, but I don't know if it is the best option for the city. But absolutely open to it. Um, a fan of vacancy control, although I don't know how much it'll do in Burlington, considering our low vacancy rate. And then um, I, as a democratic socialist, I guess I want there to be expensive apartments that help subsidize uh, or make free the cost of other apartments. So within limits, rent control for low-income individuals and families. Thank you. So I, I had to, when I'm answering this question on the survey, I did some research and found what the questioner raised, that it has unintended consequences. 
That's all I know. I'd need to look at it more. The idea is to stabilize it, to keep the rents affordable. So I'm open to it, but um, once again, I'm not, I'm not certain that is the right path, but it's one path. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Hi, um, my name is Sally Short. I am the chair of the Committee on Legislative and Community Affairs for the UVM Student Government Association. I'm also a renter in Ward 1, and starting June 1st, I'll be a renter in Ward 8. Um, for the past year or so, SGA has been looking into students' experiences um, in living off campus, and we have found that more often than not, students are being taken advantage of. Um, last fall, I attended the Tenant Summit with some other students, and we tried to bring up conversations about students' experiences as tenants, and honestly, we're met with a little bit of indifference about the subject. Um, so I was wondering if elected, what you will do to um, assist students as tenants and help empower them as they navigate this market. Whew. All right, that's another big question. Um, we have gotten a lot of questions about UVM, um, so we got two more people who want to ask. Let's give it 20 seconds if you can do it. Uh, we will start uh, Ward 7 and work our way downwards. Why not? Yes. Um, so I think just today I had lunch with a reporter, UVM Cynical, never heard of them before but I had lunch with them today. And I think what is needed more for UVM students um, and also for UVM is how do we make sure that you even have more work to do for the city of Burlington? And I'm not talking about only for UVM to increase housing and all of that, but your engagement and involvement in the city, to me, it, it's not seen yet. And it, it has potential for growth and that's something that I'm really interested in, maybe case studies that you can do as part of your schooling to get credits for the city, instead of us asking for... Okay. Um, Thank you, Ali. We'll go, sure, we'll go that way. Um, 20 seconds. Um, there's a lock at the beginning. I, well, I'll do this one. Um, you know, we have this great data set now because we rate all uh, rental properties on a one to five scale rating. And I, I've been working on bringing that data to a lightweight, accessible mobile application. Uh, full transparency this is also work that I'm doing through my professional work, so I'm a little double dipping here. Uh, but nevertheless, this app will be able to bring to the surface the quality of housing for not just students, but any renters who are either entering the rental market or have been in the rental market. When you have more information literally at your fingertips with these crazy things, you can make better decisions and, again, level out that power dynamic between renters and, uh, and landlords. Thank you. Bad landlords shouldn't have tenants. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is a huge key to this, and this isn't going to change overnight. I think more information is absolutely a huge sector of it, um, but we need to be holding our landlords accountable and actually starting this transition. It, it, you know, UVM students are three times more wealthy than the average Burlingtonian, and Burlington residents are five to eight percent more, um, you know, or more in poverty than than um, a Burling of uh, college student. So it's like there's that artificial inflation that's starting at UVM, and that goes back to holding UVM accountable, and then that will bring down the downtown housing Thank market. Thank you, Sharon. So I think I understood the question um, to be: Can you just make a synopsis of that? Is it the affordability of of housing? Um, it, it, it's about, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty broad. Um, uh, it was about affordability. It was about UVM students not feeling heard, um, about UVM student government trying to address these issues and, and not feeling like they were uh, taken seriously. So, okay, Th thank you for paraphrasing. Mm. Um, so, you know, I'm a member of the Community Coalition and, you know, helping students transition from campus to off campus and trying to find safe housing. One of the things that Councillor Roof referenced was um, uh, the code rating of, of units. That's one thing, but one of the things we did, and I know this is somewhat of a bad word, but I'd like to make it not a bad word. In the, inclu in the inclusionary zoning rewrite, one of the things that I worked for and got into that was that if 
off-campus housing is built, there will be inclusionary units, affordable units for students who are in need. So trying to match housing for, that is affordable for people who qualify for that, um, and also trying to make housing, a selection of housing safer. Thank um, you. Thank you. Um, I think this definitely includes students and goes beyond students. So one, um, making sure that every landlord every year has to give every tenant a copy of their rights um, as approved by the city in a complete pamphlet that they can just hand to them. Um, and then there was a second point that I had and I forgot it so I will let it go. Oh yeah, and then of course the uh, making sure that landlords who are performing badly over and over again no longer are allowed to rent. Sharon mentioned Community Coalition, which for those who don't know, um, is a group of students on campus as well as uh, members of the neighborhoods near, near campus as well as folks from city government, um, people from co the code office and sort of we come together and talk about the town gown relationship and issues facing students in the city. I, I don't need to tell you this, Sally, you co-chair that, that group. Um, but even today, um, we were talking about this idea of that one to five rating and trying to figure out in which neighborhoods there are more of those that need to be checked out every one or two years because they're not meeting um, the minimum requirements that they need to. I think Talk, when we're talking about minimum requirements, what the requirements we have are minimal right now, and we need to also, we need to be raising those minimum requirements Thank so you. that our students and everyone is getting what they deserve. Uh, I think a bad landlord is a bad landlord, um, and they need to be held accountable. Uh, we need to beef up code enforcement and make sure that these units, the units um, are of high quality for the students that live there. Uh, I think the second part uh, to that question is making sure that UVM builds more on-campus housing. Um, I think. The city needs to work with them in a collaborative way uh, to build more on-campus housing to alleviate the pressure that the students put on the downtown market. Um, and if you know UVM is unwilling to work with us, I think we need to empower students like you, Sally, and like you, Jillian, to you know help grow the movement and lean on the university more. So I. I I think that we need to not just build more housing again. It's not just about building more housing. It's about what, what the prices of that housing are. Because if we just build more housing that's expensive and out of reach, that's not going to do much of anything to really solve the problem. So I think when we look at the housing MOU that the city memorandum of understanding that the city has with, with uh, the city, that we need to make sure that, that within that we, we bring up the issue of cost on campus, because I think that's a crucial one. The other piece of it is that I think we need to make sure that we have um, a, uh, that, that we educate students better about their rights. I think a lot of students do not know their rights. Uh, I think we also need to make sure that landlords are held accountable for fixing properties sooner and faster, and we need to make that public. So it's not just about this sort of code enforcement thing, but it's also about the rate at which they fix properties. Thank and you. Then Thanks. Um, I was a little unclear about a couple things. UVM tenants should not be different than any other tenant. A tenant is a tenant. We need to work on that. I've been very supportive in my statewide work of increasing landlord-tenant education um, so that everyone does know their rights. I'm also aware there's been some conflicts between code enforcement and ordinances and getting it through court, and I'd like to understand where that disconnect is so that if there is code enforcement, it stands up in court. So I think there's often a division in between the university renters and uh, renters writ large in Burlington. Um, but really, where does that division come from? It comes from the price. And who's setting the price? The university is setting the price. It's $1,000 per person to share a room in university housing. That is an absolutely outrageous price, and that is uh, negatively impacting our housing market at large. Um, so I think that to collectively, we can do a lot better than um, you know, the two divided sides of, of those two groups versus the landlords, really. <laughs> I think there's a lot of us on the city council who want to see the university build more housing either themselves or through a third party. Um, but if it's too expensive and people can live in neighborhoods cheaper, that's where they're going to want to live. Um, we, they need to make it attractive and affordable. Um, the, uh, I do agree that there needs to be much greater outreach and much greater education. Um, one of my um, a more prouder accomplishments on the city council was the creation of the five, uh, the five star rating, the COC system, um, and uh, which was a resolution I wrote in 2012. Um, however, 
uh, even though we have come a long way, we still need to ra continue to raise the bar. Minimum housing standards are way too minimum, um, and we need to continually work to increase that. So if you're going to get five, um, you're going to earn it. Um, Thank you. And if you're going to get a one, we're going to know who you are. Thank you. All right, we got two more questions uh, to finish off the evening. Hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Marshall. I work on behalf of the homeless community here in Burlington. Um, <clears throat> I want to be really clear that the uh, city policy, the quote-unquote right to camp, that is not a right to camp policy. The city has not granted that any homeless person camping on city property has a right to be there. It has merely said that it won't bother people if the people, if nobody complains about them. So let's be really clear, we do not have a right to camp policy. And so when you ask, answered the question, do you support a right to camp, you need to reconsider your answer in terms of this new information. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to answer it because I have another question. So there's been some tension in the downtown recently because of homeless folks, aggressive, not, you know what, not homeless folks, street people. Street people including people who have housing, street people who are homeless, both. So we don't really know who they are except that there's some aggressive panhandling and there's uh, people eliminating waste in alleyways. My answer to this is because it is a uh, disturbing business community a lot. It's, it's very disturbing. <clears throat> so my answer to this is treat the people with dignity. Provide bathrooms. In the long term, in the long term, brick and mortar bathrooms subsidized by a fund created from the money that businesses spend cleaning their own bathrooms to use so that everybody pays the same amount, but everybody gets the benefit that they need. All the bathrooms get cleaned, taken care of. For the short term, uh, the ad hoc committee on homelessness issues is proposing portalettes uh, in abundance. Now, they've decided that they don't want to put it through the city council right away. They're not going to put it through the city agencies except to the absolute minimum that they can keep it. I want to know, do you support putting portalettes around the city for the short term, which could mean a matter of years before the brick and mortar stuff is installed to accommodate homeless people, tourists, and members of the community? All right, yes so or no gonna, question, if you would like. It's going to be just a quick yes or no, because we are running out of time. Uh, do you support uh, what Stephen said, the portlets, and then brick and mortar? Uh, so we will start. Let's start with you, Sharon, if that's all right, and just go right down. People need bathrooms, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. They need bathrooms that are accommodating and physically accessible and not just plastic boxes that can be pushed over. Yes, I do. Yes. I, I don't, but I have other ideas. But it's a yes or no, but I don't. Google crowd pleasers. They're portalettes that are more built out, um, better than just the boxes, and I, I've been advocating these for, for a long time, and I think we're moving closer to getting them. Yes, of course. Wonderful, thank you. All right, the last question of the night. Thank you for everyone uh, who has come out. Um, thank you for all the council candidates uh, who have come and, and shared. Whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm Sarah Blakely. Thanks for having me. Um, I work at the... You can put that. Okay. I just started working at COTS about four months ago, and I'm speaking uh, not as a direct representative of COTS, but as um, these are, my question is based on my experiences in my work in, um, or based on my experience in this work. I think I said that correctly. Um, what do you see as the city's role in supporting victims of assault in the homeless encampments? Thanks. All right, um, so we will try to keep it uh, as brief as possible. Last question, uh, we'll start Ward 8 and... Can you please re-ask the question, please? Should I say it again? Yes, please. Okay. Um, what do you see 
as the city's role in supporting victims of assault in the homeless encampments. So how will the city support uh, people who have been assaulted in homeless encampments? Thanks. All right, so we'll start. Start at eight? Good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think you gotta do it, you gotta do it two ways. You gotta first work on the prevention side, and then in the unfortunate situations when it occurs, you need to work on the support side um, and have that support be trauma-informed. We have amazing uh, service providers that work across not just homelessness, but sexual assault, um, which I've been working on for, for many years, uh, not just in the homeless community. Uh, so we need to further invest in them and, and support them so that they can be working on uh, outreach to prevent these things. And then Thank you. again, in those situations where they occur, we wanna make sure that we are providing the trauma-informed support on the back end. Thank you. It is, it is 818, so as brief as you could be, I know it's hard. So support, absolutely, um, and, and follow-up through someone's recovery is huge too, but I also think that this, again, is a systemic issue with mental health and resources and funding going towards those programs in the city. We need way more funding going towards addictions and recovery programs, and we need to have facilities that are open 24-7 for uh, folks that need to be utilizing them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so to the first question, I think the city don't have a campment policy, but the city has an encampment policy, so that it's a very clear. And I think to the last question, it is important um, that safety should come first, whether it's an, in a camp or in an encamp. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think, it, as a few others have said, we do have a wide range of resources available in the city. Um, there, it's oftentimes hard to navigate, and uh, I think that it is up to the city to provide resources um, and support for people for for victims um, by encouraging them to by by helping them um, to to locate the uh, organizations where they can get the most support um, for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. I think that the city can do a number of things, including uh, continuing to have strong relationships with the organizations such as COTS that um, are doing this work. Uh, I think another thing is that when we are giving support, I think it is pretty important that we're not necessarily doing that through the police system. Um, I think that there's a lot of um, stuff wrapped up in, in that kind of presence in this community. So I think that we need to be really smart about how we're doing it, perhaps through the Community Justice Center or, or some other model. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, anybody who's been assaulted needs to support, be supported. Public safety is primary whether you're homeless or not homeless. The follow-up resources need to be funded. The regional groups like COTS need to be funded. That may not come all from the city of Burlington, and so we need to be a strong advocate for making sure those community resources have the resources that they need for the follow-up work. Thank you. We need to prioritize and center uh, the uh, the experiences and needs of the victim in these situations, making sure that we uh, talk with them about what they need to feel supported uh, in these situations, embracing a true restorative justice model uh, for them. Uh, and sometimes that may mean that they don't want the police uh, involved, and I think that that's okay. Uh, and I think that they need to really have their needs uh, centered in this process. Thank you. Um, I think the victim needs to be, you know, have the support of the community, um, and we need to help them line up with the services uh, that we can provide for them, um, whether it be, you know, uh, legal recovery, um, restorative justice, um, and we just need to make it very clear because we have a lot of services, and you know, they can be confusing to navigate. And so I think we just we need to make it more clear where people have these access points uh, to these services so they can get the help that they need. Thank you. I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, the city council must uh, believe and support survivors, period. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that this is not like an area of expertise for me. I helped one street person um, make it to a new uh, location after, um, and I didn't know what to do. I think she didn't know what to do. Um, and yeah, it'd be definitely clarity probably is what I'm hearing from the council, but would love to actually hear from people who know more about this. Thank you. Well, certainly, as everyone said, no matter where the assault occurs, you need to support the victim. I think in an encampment, it's a little different because you don't have like walls and structures that keep you 
separate and protected. So I do believe, as others have said, you need to work with the individual to find out how, how they want to be supported and get them the services they need. Wonderful. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. Please give everyone here a round of applause, the counselors, the folks who spoke.